Shalom, and welcome to All the Colors of the Rainbow. Previously, we have discussed two different words that we would interpret as the color red. Today, we're going to go on to the traditional understanding of the next color, which is orange. There is no word for orange in Biblical Hebrew. The modern word for orange is katom, and we're going to investigate the root, biblical root for this word. The phrase ketem ophir appears a few times in Job 28.16. It cannot be valued with the gold of ophir, with the precious onyx or the sapphire. Psalm 45.9. King's daughters were among thy honorable women. Upon thy right hand did stand the queen in gold of Ophir. So there are many words in Hebrew, I think maybe five, for the word gold, and this idea of ketem is one of those words. It's usually used in conjunction with the ketem Ophir, the gold of Ophir. We don't think of gold really being an orange color, but if you're familiar with the gold of the Black Hills in South Dakota, we see that gold comes in many colors, and I think it's considered to be white and yellow and pink gold. Here are two examples of the different colors of gold and the type of artwork they especially do in South Dakota because they mine all these three different kinds of gold. We could say maybe one of them looks a little bit orange in color. Ketem has a, another meaning, which is displayed in Jeremiah 2.22. For though thou wash thee with nitre, and take thee much soap, yet thine iniquity is marked before me, saith the Lord Yahweh. So there's an idea behind the word ketem, that's an idea of staining, and even the staining of blood. So there is a color to it. The root ketem is also used in this poetical terminology, the word michtam, of which David has written several. Psalm 16.1, michtam of David. And you see, they don't even translate it. They just transliterate it. Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. Psalm 59.1, to the chief musician, al tashchit michtam of David, when Saul sent, and they watched the house to kill him. Deliver me from mine enemies, O oh my God. Depend me from them that rise up against me. So why is this idea of the gold or the, the staining chosen to be this poetical term? Uh, maybe it has something to do with the idea that the psalm is to make a certain kind of impression on you. Now, I thought it was kind of odd that there were no oranges, uh, not even orange fruit in the Bible, because there are so many oranges that are grown in Israel today. And uh, the modern word for, in Hebrew, for orange is tapuz. But it's really a contraction of two words, tapuach zahav, which means a golden apple. Just like um, in several languages, including Hebrew, the potato is the apple that grows in the ground, tapuach adama, in French we say pomme de terre, but uh, here this is the golden apple, so it is an orange. There is one place where apples of gold are spoken of, and that's in Proverbs 25:11. A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold and pictures of silver. However, it appears that there are uh, most likely were not oranges in the Middle East at the time of the Proverbs or even at the time of the translation of the Septuagint. Even in the Septuagint, this phrase is translated as apples of gold. It's not translated as the fruit, oranges. Uh, oranges came originally from maybe China or India and they're first uh, recorded as being cultivated perhaps 2500 BCE. You know that Solomon lived around 900 BCE. It doesn't appear that the oranges had migrated across the, um, the continents to have gotten to the Middle East. We see by um, the first century CE that the Romans were developing 
uh, orange orchards in the North Africa. So certainly by then, they had come across the Middle East. Um, if anybody would have had oranges in the Middle East at that time, it would have been Solomon. We know that he had great fleets of ships that probably went all over the world, but clearly they weren't cultivated at that time and they weren't popularly known. So this is the idea of, uh, as best we can get, to the idea of orange in Hebrew as part of the rainbow. So we're going to go on to the next color, which is yellow, and it is tzahov. We see it only used in connection with the inspection for the uh, disease, which is called leprosy. Leviticus 13.30. Then the priest shall see the plague, and behold, if it be in sight deeper than the skin, and there be in it a yellow hair, then the priest shall pronounce him unclean. So I think there's about four citations in this chapter that use this word. It also appears in Ezra 8:27, also twenty basins of gold, and a thousand drams, and two vessels of fine copper, precious as gold. So the word fine there uh, could be translated as yellow copper. Now yellow copper, copper is not yellow, but copper is used both in brass and in bronze as the uh, yellow base of the metal. Then either tin or zinc, which are white metals, are added to it and lighten it up. So we know that brass and bronze can both appear um, as gold and in fact, the, um, the word here, which is copper, is nehoshet. This is the only time in the King James where it's actually translated as copper. So we have this idea of yellow and uh, copper, the yellow color, coming together. And in fact, the name for the color yellow, tzahob, is a cognate of the word for gold, the common word for gold, which is zahav. Genesis 2.11. The name of the first is pison. That is, which compasseth the whole land of Chavilah, where there is gold. Genesis 24:22. And it came to pass, as the camels had gone drinking, that the man took a golden earring of half a shekel weight and two bracelets for her hands of ten shekels weight of gold. So we see that this word gold refers to the ore. Um, it also is used for making jewelry. Genesis 41, 42, And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it on Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. The value of gold is shown um, in this piece of jewelry which carries with it the authority of the Pharaoh. Exodus 20, 23, Ye shall not make me gods of silver, neither shall ye make unto you gods of gold. And so we see that people made idols out of gold. Exodus 25, 12, And thou shalt cast four rings of gold for it, and put them in the four corners thereof, and two rings shall be in the one side of it, and two rings in the other side of it. And thou shalt make staves of shittim wood, and overlay them with gold. We see that this valuable metal is used for the making of of the accoutrements of the Mishkan. In Esther 1.6, where were white, green, and blue hangings fastened with cords of fine linen and purple to silver rings and pillars of marble. The beds were of gold and silver upon a pavement of red and blue and white and black marble. And they gave them drink in vessels of gold, the vessels being diverse one from another and royal wine in abundance, according to the state of the king. So there are, uh, there may be furniture that's made of gold. Here are the drinking vessels, the cups are made of gold. In Job 23.10, But he knoweth the way that I take. When he hath tried me, I shall come forth as gold. With the idea of gold comes the processing of gold. And in order to take the ore to the finished metal, it must be tried in a furnace. It's heated up very, very hot. The metal melts, it becomes liquid, and then there, the dirt 
can be taken off from it, and then we have the pure gold. Or that's all that's left. The idea of trial, of coming through the furnace, is associated with the color gold. Psalm 105:37, He brought them forth also with silver and gold, and there was not one feeble person among them, among their tribes. This psalm is talking about the exodus from Egypt, and we know that that was a trial, and the people came forth as gold. They went through the trial, and they came out purified. One other meeting we see for this word Zahav, Job 37.22. Fair weather cometh out of the north, with God is terrible majesty. So the idea of shining, like shining like the sun, is interpreted as fair weather, and it is as gold. So we have looked at the red, which is a picture of the man, Adom, Adam, uh, being born into this world as a physical human being, and perhaps having the opportunity to be uh, like the worm that attaches itself to the wood and gives its life for the next generation. And now we see that we have this idea of, of gold, of being tried in the fire and coming forth as gold, that a refining process takes place. Next time we will go on to the green of the rainbow. In the meantime, Tasimata Inayim Al Hashemayim. Keep your eye on the sky, your redemption draw nigh. Shalom.